Hey everybody, happy Black Shirt Friday. This is my 1,000th post on Instagram and it's going to go to my IGTV account. So I wanted to discuss with everybody what is the point, what's the focus, what's the goal, the vision, the dream, all of the stuff that I got going on you see on a daily basis in my feed. It's a lot. So I'm going to start off with the disclaimer that I teach business classes and I always want to reuse, recycle, and repurpose materials from year to year. I purposely don't believe in wasting time, effort, and materials for anything. It takes too much effort to get out of bed and it takes too much time to, to drive to work, clock in, not enjoy what you do, produce a product that you grade, assess, and then you toss because it's not what you wanted. It's a waste of time. So my mindset has always been, if I build something one school year, how do I transition it to another school year? How do I transition a project so it's effective, fun, interesting, all the bells and the whistle, and it continues continuously? What I'm messing with are the strikers that I printed out. I printed out 10 because I had 10 extra turrets, and I was doing math and I should stop doing math at 3 o'clock in the morning is the issue. So, one, I'm writing a curriculum that I can sell to schools. I, I graduated with a BA in business management, minored in Japanese studies. Yeah, living in Japan influenced a lot of my decisions as far as my teaching style, how to approach situations, and, and how to be a better human being. Including meditation. If you don't meditate, you need to figure out your own method of meditation. That's the only way of making through this coronavirus BS as it is. <clears throat> so, let's start off with the education aspect. I'm, I was originally teaching in San Antonio and Austin. And then I moved back to Louisiana where I graduated from college and I met my wife. And I live here now. But I went to high school in San Antonio, grew up in San Antonio, and various other places. New Orleans 2120. The city of New Orleans is historically gorgeous. It's beautiful. If you've never been, I recommend it after the COVID-2019 crap is over with. Not to come during Mardi Gras. You want to come during Jazz Fest. You want to come during Voodoo Fest. You want to come middle of the summer when there is no special events going on and there's no high end of tur it's just normal tourist traffic and you don't want to do an airbnb you want to do a hotel either uptown mid-city downtown that way you can get out and get into the life of new orleans and not get stuck somewhere with that being said i want to know what the city's going to look like in 100 years i'm not a city planner i'm not an urban developer None of those fancy job titles. I'm a teacher. So I dreamed up a plan to have students address this issue. That gives them a chance to role play like gamers do. They get to role play being the mayor, city council, planning department, budget and finance. And then working through different role play scenarios have to figure out how to fix potholes. Do not drive in New Orleans. We're infamous for potholes, and it's ridiculous. Two, how to reinforce the highway structure to make the city more commutable. Now, compared to Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, California, Miami, and other major American cities that have terrible traffic problems, New Orleans is not that bad. Parade season, special events, traffic is shut down. You just might as well walk or let someone else drive, catch an Uber, Airbnb. So the emphasis of the project is to incorporate role play, research, 3D printing, and cover the basis of all core classes taught in public school. So they have to learn about socioeconomic status. They have to learn a lot about social studies. They have to learn about water quality and all these other elements that end up in the big cumulation project at the end of the school year. So, how do we get from Battletech to the classroom 
to terrain. Glad you asked. So I was working on looking for different grants that are cheap, don't need a lot of work to buy 3D printers, buy the parts that go into a 3D printer, everything like that. Replacement nozzles, getting teachers trained on how to use a 3D printer, teachers developing a safety plan to teach students with minimal supervision at the high school level or intermediate supervision at the middle school level to get 3D printers up and running when you get to that project phase. So that teaches awareness, it teaches career technology education awareness, it gets kids looking at different job skills, it brings up a lot of information. Now, I don't have a background in graphic design or 3D design. I literally found Tinkercad through Google. It was free and I learned it pretty quickly just by playing with it and watching YouTube. Now, as a lot of professionals in the 3D printing world have told me, belligerently told me, Tinkercad doesn't count for industry certification. It's something kids learn. I want to curse, but I'm not. No doubt. I get it. But the point is, is that if I'm introducing the curriculum at the middle school level, it has to have a starting point to get that student from junior high school, middle school, or primary school, as they say in other countries, to secondary or high school, if they're interested in for, as a career, or they want to learn how to apply it to other studies. That's pretty much the point. So, Battletech. Um, me growing up, Battletech's been a part of my life since 1986. And I say 1986 because I found Battletech three to four years after, as a five-year-old, watching Macross in Okinawa, Japan with my dad. So, when we moved military bases, yeah, I'm a duck, Air Force kid. My dad wasn't an officer, so I'm not a brat, I'm a duck. There's a difference, you need to look it up. So, with that being said, um, found Battletech, recognized the, the um, Destroid, known as the Spartan, on the cover of the City Tech box. And I saw a lot of Japanese anime robots that are in the Battletech universe. And I'm like, ooh, I want to play this game. So, my parents were reluctant. They're like, you should go play basketball. And I'm like, I don't have an athletic bone in my body. I don't really like PE. Not that I'm lazy. I'd rather go do martial arts. Japanese influence. So, found my first game in Battletech, learned to play the game. And it really, it really changed my perspective on gaming. I like giant robots more than I like basketball. I like giant robots more than I like a lot of things. I played Crescent Ox Inception, Crescent Ox Revenge, Mech Warrior 1, 2, 3, 4. Never got an Xbox for Mecha Saw. I wasn't doing it. PlayStation for life. So, fast forward with all that information, we're back to the conundrum. Which has always been a conundrum if you're a Battletech fan. If you play on hex sheets and you're perfectly fine with that, you're not going to be offended when I say this. I don't like playing a 2D game with 3D models. Just saying that out loud. So... One of the first things I was introduced to by a good friend of the family, Mr. Eckerman, um, was Geohex. I could have mountains. Which to me, at the point, if you would have saw my face as a kid, you would have been like, wow, he's really excited over styrofoam mountains. I'm like, damn, Skippy, I'm excited. Now I can hide behind a rock and not get shot. <laughs> Because we disagree what level 1 and level 2 means. I dealt with a lot of rules lawyers. I'm, just, I'm, I'm over it. Over it. But then it was like, how do we get buildings? And Mr. Eckerman says, well, you can get railroad buildings. Same fact. And I'm like, hmm. Now I want towers. Now I want bridges. Now I want skyscrapers. There's a lot of things I want. And back then, 3D, tech, 3D printing technology didn't exist. 
you had to deal with the railroad modelers and their extreme, extravagantly ridiculous prices and all that other fun stuff. So now, fast forward to where we are. I used to play Quick Strike, which was Battle Force 2 merged into Quick Strike. Now we call it Alpha Strike. Um, I taught a unit called Hello Kitty vs. Godzilla. I got the dropship commander PDF files. I had a laser printer. I had bond paper. I had all the little office supplies I could want on school year. And so while the kids were making their movie sets for Hello Kitty vs. Godzilla, I was plotting how many buildings that were in perfect construction in great shape by the end of school year to take to the local game shop to use for Battletech terrain. And that lasted until the game shop threw away all of the buildings, even though they had my name on them in a box in one of the rooms. I'm like, no problem. Next school year, same thing. Got together with the students. They did the project. They rebuilt. And of course, I put to the side. But then, let's fast forward some more. Paper buildings aren't sturdy enough to support eight or nine mechs standing on them. Paper streets don't really do the battlefield justice. How do we get around that? And I was always looking for terrain, always looking for battle tech scale 6mm terrain or epic scale terrain. So one of the partners at the shop had um, 40k epic terrain. We used that for years. And it was just like, God, after two to three years of using the same buildings, I'm like, we need some new buildings. So, um, there was a dice drive to RPG sale where you could get a set of 3D print files for a reasonable price. And my buddy with a 3D printer in San Antonio, Mark LaRoe, um, printed up buildings for me at a very reasonable rate, greatly appreciate it. Still have all the buildings, even though the summer got to some of them and they warped. Don't care if they warped. I'm going to green stuff and add fire, flames, and battle damage. So it's all good. Point is, we evolve, we elevate, we continue. Now, in a classroom, especially for social studies, you look at pages and maps all day. With the advent of technology, Google, and YouTube, I can take a child's imagination to anywhere on the planet where someone has been and filmed. Hmm. So then it... it in my mind, escalated from, we're going to teach a class, send you to YouTube, let you look at all these other countries, and then you can't go. You're too young to get on a plane. What else can we do? Well, we can get you to design something that you're inspired by. Awesome. So we're going to circle back to the design process. You introduce the concept to the student. You design the problem to the student. We're building a city that is over two, 300 years old, and we're gonna add another 100 years to it, which is outside of the lifespan of the kid, automatically. But then we want them to imagine a sustainable green economic future without all the politics. We want them to design something that is considered sustainable, that is more effective in moving traffic, goods, services, and commuting. Hmm. Okay, so what I would do is that I would show a video of me or people that drive around the city of New Orleans, show them the historical line, show them how racism impacted the development of the city, show them how the highway, the I-10, destroyed the Treme, disenfranchised a lot of people, and just keep rolling with it. But at the same time, educate them on how the decisions that they make in their sessions can change the future. So, in essence, I'm giving a college-level course watered down for junior high school through high school with the in-product tangible result that's 3D printed that the kids can elect to take home. It's theirs. They earned it. They designed it. And the ones that don't want it end up in the terrain box. So that's the whole premise of what's going on. Now, for the stuff that's not related to the classroom projects, I'm writing a technical readout. If you want to contribute, 
DM me, let's discuss. Um, the title could read out covers 3043, which is level one custom designs and modifications of current designs and published designs. 3052, the upgrades, which is more custom designs or modifications on current designs. And then we have 3069, beginning to the end, which is same thing. Refits, customs, what have you, whatnot. The point is, is there's a lot of game sessions that I've read about online, played in myself, or designs I kicked around playing with Mega Mech, Mega Mech Lab, Skunk Works, that it'd be nice to see published on the page that people can flip to and say, hey, I really like this concept. I want to try it out. And you've given me something. So the technical readout is one part of it. I'm going to make a Alpha Strike and Record Sheet PDF with it. And I want to just share it with the world. Where is this next phase going is that it's going to also be part of my ongoing campaign notes from playing 3025, 3050, all the way through the Jihad, giving a new spin on the Battletech universe through shorts and, and alternate segments of the Battletech continuous timeline. Meaning that my stories supplement the Battletech ethos, but don't deter from the main storyline. Like Gundam side missions so that's the whole point of this 1000th post if you caught up with me or kept up with me great um the things that i want to see happen later on in the battletech universe is um all right mom good night um okay responsibilities so in short I'm looking forward to my Kickstarter I have a character I put up artwork if you check a few posts back you'll find the artwork of me in front of Akuma done by a buddy in San Antonio um, the next thing I want to see is excuse me catalyst not only work with the writers to fill in the gaps in the timeline between the Jihad and Dark Ages, but effectively get us up to a nice 3200. I'm eager to see it in my lifetime. Um, I want to see new heroes and villains. I want to see what clans will come to the Ilkhan. I'm not getting any debates or rumor mills. Um, I want to see the direction of the game. And that's the big picture. Small picture, I want to see more boats. I want to see more wet naval. I want to see cruisers, battleships. I want to see submarines. And I don't just want one-offs like 3026 or the Vehicles Compendium technical readout. I actually want stuff that's been rumored through the ethos for decades, but never actually seen a design. Um... Those are the things I care about. Those are the things I love. Now, um, the last thing I want to talk about is why Alpha Strike? Why Quick Strike? Why Battle Force? Time. That's what it really comes down to. I love the crunchy accounting. I call Classic Battletech the accounting game because you account for every ammo. You account for every point of damage. You account for all the actuators. You, you account for it. You have to every step the problem is that it's slow a four on four match is perfect as part of a campaign going into a longer rpg session when you're young being 40 and then looking at um time i don't have and then juggling everyone's schedule to catch up for a game alpha strike works so for eight years, off and on, I had Monday Night Battle Tech, which was Alpha Strike, Quick Strike, and RPG elements mixed in. 
and running an ongoing campaign, which worked. So I could get a battalion on battalion or battalion on a cluster or cluster on cluster game of 45 mechs or less in in under three hours and have the same amount of fun. I know some of the purists are, are rolling their eyes and screaming like, how could you not want to play classic Battletech? And I sat down and did the math. It would literally take a day of 10 hours of games, gaming nonstop for a regiment on regiment game on one table to get through everyone's movement, everyone's shooting, everyone's resolution. I don't care what homebrew method or speed method you have, it would take forever. Even if you did company on company across 10 tables, it would still be a long time process. It wouldn't be quick. It wouldn't be easy. I wouldn't enjoy it. Um, on the flip side, Alpha Strike, I did a regiment on regiment game, got through turn four in eight hours. And the disclaimer is I set up the table the night before at a game shop. And we came in, and after one hour, everyone pulling out their minis, my stuff was already on the table and deployed. We, we got a full six and a half hours of gaming in. Alpha Strike for the win. Um, I don't play with all the special abilities. I need to reread because we got new books. I'm waiting on a new companion edition to come out. But that's my spill. So last thing before I kill this video is... Um, Going through this coronavirus nonsense is a really big deal. And some people are stuck in an apartment by themselves or they're going through whatever the situation is. If you want to pick me up, all I can offer you are Silent Hill postcards or Japanese postcards. So if you DM me your address, I will be more than happy to send you a postcard. I don't want any money. Um, don't want anything. All I ask you to do is when you get it, Tag me in a post at Mecha Madness or Monarchy Travel, and let's call it what it is. Kindness. Because kindness is going to win the coronavirus war. And also staying at home and what, you know, all the, the sensical stuff. So, this is my Black Shirt Friday night message to you all. Love you. Game, paint, do whatever you need to do to make it. But I want to see you on the other side. Peace.